name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who can stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our worthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As I call an ordained servant of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And number 345.
Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to light the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday of Advent is taken from the prophet Isaiah, the 61st chapter, beginning with the first verse. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, Give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery and wrong, I will faithfully give them their recompense. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join now in praying our gradual psalm, the 126th psalm. We pray responsibly whole verse by whole verse. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. And our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the day. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle reading is taken from St. Paul's first epistle of the Thessalonians, fifth chapter, beginning with the 16th verse. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may be that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter, beginning with the sixth verse. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all who might believe through him he was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. 
This is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing? You are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water. But among you stands one who you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptized. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join now in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And for I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to turn to our end of day, number 347, which we will speak.
desert far and near, calling sinners to repentance, since the kingdom now is here. O oh, that morning cry obey, now prepare for God away. Let the valleys rise to meet him, and the hills bow down to greet him. Make ye straight what long was crooked, make the rougher places plain. Let your hearts be true and humble, as befits this holy reign. For the glory of the Lord, now our earth is shed abroad. And all flesh shall see the token that his word is never broken. Satan's, the crushing burden, however, was God's gift to us. 
The lie turned us away from the one on whom everything really depended. The crushing burden was given to turn us back to Him. And so, yes, beloved, God can even work the late December panic for our good, as He helps us to see that we can't carry it all, that our shoulders aren't broad enough to carry all of Christmas, or any other part of life for that matter. One person who's got to carry it all, one person who's got Christmas riding on his shoulders, one person who throughout the rest of the year has got to do it too. In His mercy, God sends John the Baptizer into our lives this morning to turn our eyes to Him. John shows us the way. Talk about a person who had a lot to do. John was sent to prepare the way of the Lord to make his path straight. He had no team of elves or eight tiny reindeer or bright nosed Rudolph either, and there was no North Polar Bear in the wilderness of Jordan, that's for sure. But John did need all of them for the work that he was sent to do. Not because John was up to the task, no, not even the greatest man born a woman could do, could do it. No, John didn't need elves or reindeer because he had the Holy Spirit who came upon him when he was still in his mother's womb. Now make no mistake about it, the Spirit didn't help him to get it all done either. No, the Spirit kept him in the truth that he was not the one. He was not the light. He was only sent to bear witness to him. The Spirit kept John in the truth that he could only do what he was sent to do, to baptize with water. There was another coming after him, a mightier one, whose sandal he was not worthy to stoop down and untie, a mightier one whose slave he wasn't even worthy of being. He was the only one who could and do, would do it all. The Spirit kept John in his vocation, his calling. The Spirit kept him in the repentant life that the same Spirit had sent him to preach. John doesn't take up what isn't his to carry. John lets the coming Lord be the Lord. He simply pours the water that he has given to pour, and preaches the word that he has given to preach. With so many pointing the finger at him, it would have been a great temptation to turn his finger to his own chest, and let it become all about him and what he had to do. But no, in the Spirit today, he keeps his finger directed away from himself and towards Jesus. Yes, it all rests on Jesus, Jesus and no one else. The same Spirit that came to John in his mother's womb, and kept him in the truth, comes to you today, beloved, and the word that the Spirit has given me to preach, that you too might be kept in this truth. He calls on you in this hour to repent of all those places, where you have let the lie turn your finger toward your own chest, and allow the weight of home, work, church, or even Christmas to rest on your poor shoulders. You have sinned against the Lord in this, and you have sinned against yourselves. It is a great impiety toward the Lord, and it is a cruel thing to do to yourself. It is a lie. And the Spirit calls it out in you today, so that you might repent of it and be set free in the truth of Christ's Lordship over everything, your home, your work, your church, and yes, even Christmas. All we can do, beloved, is in the truth of Christ's Lordship, pour the water that we've been given to pour, and with the Spirit's help, keep our fingers squarely directed at Jesus whenever we are tempted to turn it toward ourselves. Believe me, I know the temptation, and have given into it far too often. I was wrestling with it even as I wrote this sermon. My panic dream from the night before was still in my mind, where I was sitting at the front of a rather full church on Christmas Eve, and realized that I hadn't written my sermon yet or printed off the bulletins for that night, all the while I was running around looking for a dozen eggs to give to someone. All I'd still have to do for Christmas was running through my head with every word I put down for this sermon. One task after another popped into my mind interspersed with panicky thoughts about COVID-19 and all that I was supposed to do to keep people safe during the celebrations of our Lord's birth this year. I kept praying, but it wasn't easy. I kept worrying, too. I know that Luther said to pray and let God worry. Easier said than done. How hard it is to simply let God be God. Yes, beloved, I know all too well that stuff still needs to get done. The water still has to be poured. The Word still needs to be preached. But boy, it goes all so much better, and there's so much more joy in it all when you've got your eyes and heart firmly fixed on Jesus. Which is why our Lord in mercy is here in his flesh and blood with us today. He's here to draw our eyes and hearts to himself, so that that finger might be directed away from ourselves to him. Here at the altar, he proclaims to us again the truth. That his shoulders are the mighty ones that have carried it all for us. Home, work, church, and yes, even Christmas. His mighty shoulders have carried all of life for us, even as they had carried the burden of the failures as they bore the heavy cross of Calvary. I was made man, he says in this moment, to have just such shoulders, so that I couldn't do this for you, so that I could carry it all for you. 
I know how weary you are. I know how heavy it is, because I have borne it all. Now please hand it all over to me. Let me bear it for you now. Let me be the one who does all that I want to do through you. It is not your burden to bear. It is mine. Repent and let it go, my beloved one. Let me be who I am to you. Let me be your Lord and your God. It's all I want from you and for you. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding of your hearts and minds. Christ Jesus is the life of all the Amen. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the Lord's name. Congregation peace. Anakin, do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? If so, then answer, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil and all of his works and all of his ways? If so, then answer, yes, I renounce it. Yes, I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? If so, then answer, yes, I believe in God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, I believe in God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God, and the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from them, and confess in the small catechism to be faithful and true? So then answer, I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? So then answer, I do by the grace of God. I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God, and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? So then answer, I do by the grace of God. I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession in church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? So then answer, I do by the grace of God. I do by the grace of God. Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? So then answer, I do. I do. Will you support the work of our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? So then answer, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. Upon this your confession of faith, I acknowledge publicly that you are a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation, receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation the Lord has given to His Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congregation of Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise You for Your great goodness in bringing is your daughter to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, enabling her both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit she may continue steadfast in the one true faith and the fellowship of this congregation. Together we await the day when all will be, when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, and on forever. Amen. Grace for Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people of God. For all Christians, that the Lord would keep them from every fall and would turn them from his words of peace, let us pray for them. Lord, For the church, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, which richly and daily forgive our sins and the sins of all believers. And for Timothy, our bishop, Marvin, our regional pastor, Brian, our circuit counselor, and Kurt, our pastor in Christ, they would remain faithful and not deny but confess your truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the children of our families, that every darkness would be lightened by your son's gracious visitation. May God will preserve them from dangers to body and soul. Guide them by his word and wise paths, and keep them firm in the faith to life's end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our nation and its leaders, that God will preserve our land, 
and its citizens in peace and harmony. Thank all who serve in harm's way. Let us pray to you. Lord, 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 have mercy. In thanksgiving for the kindness shown to us in Christ and the certain hope of the resurrection of eternal life with Him, for those in every circumstance or need, remembering especially this day our brothers and sisters, Herb, Bonnie, Joyce, Dave, Nancy, Barb, Paul, Donna, Lori, Levi, Annette, Frank, Eric, Debbie, Betty, Ron, Janelle, Donna, Amy, and the family of Paul as they breathe. Let us pray to them. Lord, have mercy. For those in the communion, that God will give us faith to believe the New Testament in His blood, seek His holy supper for the forgiveness of our sins, confess the truth with honest hearts, and commune with one another at this altar. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, dear Father, we commend all for which you pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, and forever. Amen. Continue with the service of the sacrament on page 280. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good right inside of you. We should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. The countless blessings you shall freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us, and you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, we made on him our sin, giving him into death that we may not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead, and lives and reigns for all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death, and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praise him and say, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of pain, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your boundless mercy, you sent your servant John the Baptist to proclaim that Christ, the kingdom of heaven, draws near. With thankful hearts, we pray, come, Lord Jesus, confident that in his body and blood, given us to eat and drink, to receive the forgiveness of sins, and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, 
which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Mm-hmm. 